One can appreciate Peter's dramatic reading of the text this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning, managing your expectations. Managing your expectations. Jimmy and Michael are a new thing. They've been together for six months. The chemistry is on. They have connected and they can see a future with each other in each other's lives. They like each other's company and a few other things about each other. Each step in their life feels like the next step and so they move in together. Jimmy comes from a big family. And while his family didn't have a lot of material things, they had a lot of joy in their household. And so his family loved celebrations and birthday parties. Anytime there was a reason to celebrate, his family would get into it. And so Jimmy grew up in a place where birthdays were celebrated. There was always a birthday cake and there was always ice cream and there was a big chorus of people singing happy birthday to the person whose birthday it was. Jimmy grew up in a household that made him feel special about himself and it made him feel special about his birthday. When Jimmy moved out of his home, he continued the celebrations, and every year his birthday rolled around, Jimmy was like, hey, it's my birthday. It's time to celebrate. And so it's almost Jimmy's birthday, and he lets Michael know. He lets Michael know, hey, my birthday is around the corner. It's coming. The day finally arrives, and guess what? Michael does a poor job of wishing Jimmy a happy birthday. He doesn't really do too much other than wake up and say, happy birthday, Jimmy. This is one of the times they enter a real argument. Jimmy thinks, what kind of person doesn't even show up for their loved one's birthday? Jimmy is beside himself, and nothing Michael says to him makes it any better. Jimmy is mad. You see, Jimmy had an expectation of how his birthday was to go long before he turned 29 years old. And each year he had grew in that understanding of his birthday. And his birthday was meant to be celebrated. And Michael, Michael had disappointed him. Expectations are almost invisible and often go unnoticed until they are not met. And then they show up in living color. I expected to get an invitation to the wedding. I expected you to clean up after yourself. I expected you were picking up the kids this time. I expected you to handle that situation with more maturity. I expected the check to come into the mail by now. I'm waiting. I expected to get the job promotion. I expected my family to show up for my performance. I expected to win the lottery. (laughs) I expected my spouse to continue the love affair, but he prefers to watch TV on the weekend. I expected that if you watch TV all morning, you would share the TV in the evening. I expected if I paid for dinner last week, you'd get the tab this week. I expected to be in better financial, spiritual, or physical condition. I expected when I put my foot down where it would land, but instead I ended up on the floor. Our expectations of others sometimes leaves us with our mouths hanging open, dangling in the wind. This is where we enter the biblical text today. This boss in the text has to go out of town. And while he's away, he leaves his treasure with three of his workers. He gives one worker five talents. He gives another worker two talents. And he gives the last worker one talent. The one with the five talents, when he comes back, has traded. And so the master comes back. This worker has doubled his fortune. Well done. The boss is happy. We don't know what the second worker did, but he also doubled his fortune. The boss is still happy. So far, the first two employees have lived up to the boss's expectations. And if this were all, we could go home and have Thanksgiving dinner now. But from here, things take a mean twist. The third worker took his money, dug a hole, and buried it. And when the boss came back, he gave him the exact amount back. 
The boss gets visibly angry, and then he verbally assaults him and, and, and annihilates him in front of the other two workers. He calls him lazy and unfaithful, questioning his work ethic. He calls him evil, and then he announces to everyone that those who have more will be given more and that those who have nothing will have it taken from them. And he takes from this guy. So to the one that doesn't have anything, we're going to take more. So the one talent that he did have is taken away. Clearly, this boss has an expectation, and clearly the first two understood the assignment. But this third worker did not meet the boss's expectations, and the boss is mad. He's so mad, he goes off and kicks the guy out. We're talking this morning about expectations. A boy grows up in a conservative household with a dad who is a prominent pastor. Early on, the sweet boy child knows he is sexually attracted to other boys. When his dad learns of his attraction, he beats him severely. He explains to his son that this attraction is not of God, and that he is to stop his behavior immediately. The boy tries to obey his father, but he cannot curb his attraction. It is like trying to stop the ocean from reaching the shore. He tries to hide it, but even in his efforts, he proves unsuccessful. The dad is embarrassed and explains what this could do to his career. The sister and mom look on in horror. The dad continues to use physical violence to curve the boy's appetite. The tension in the house grows until one day the boy realizes he has only one road and he commits suicide. The little sister who loved her brother remembered his words, I think living a lie will eat you up inside, and whatever hell it is, it must be something like that. The son could not live up to his dad's expectations of him, maybe like the third employee. Expectations are hard, they're unrelenting. It is the bar we hold others to and sometimes even ourselves. Last Sunday during Transgender Day of Remembrance, we learned that there are quite a few people who exit because the expectations of others become too much for them. Expectations are hard and inflexible and they can make it hard for others. Sometimes our expectations can be just a bit much, even when it doesn't necessarily feel like it to us that they are. Expectations can be like a glass wall. I was at a conference last week. We were listening tentatively to the speaker when all of a sudden we heard a loud thump. As humans are prone to do, we follow the sound of the noise with our heads to address our curiosity. It appeared that one of the participants had walked into the glass window. How did that happen was my next question. Y'all know after the conference was over, I did walk up to him. I did check him out, but I did, was just a little bit curious about how he pulled it off. So let me back up a little bit. The exit to the room was a door, but on both sides of the door, from floor to ceiling, was this clean and very clear glass. I imagine if you looked at it from a certain way, it could look like you could walk through. This guy got up during the middle of the presentation. He got up to exit. Something distracted him, and when he turned back to exit, he saw an exit where there was glass. Seeing clearly out, he walked forward, only to be stopped in his tracks by the glass. Loud thump. And in that moment, I did think that's what, that's what an expectation is like. Glass, unrelenting. As a pastor, I get to preach this text every th three years. We have what is known as a lectionary cycle. There's the A year, the B year, and the C year. So every three years this comes around. I know the path, but for all of my preaching, I have always felt disturbed by this boss's behavior. It just doesn't sit right with me. Usually I go down the road of preaching, hey, that guy just needed another faith step. But maybe, maybe this boss is the one that needs checking in the scripture today. 
Maybe this boss could use a little bit of pushback. Maybe this boss needs to manage his expectations. After all, it says very clearly he gave to each based on their own skill set. So you already know this employee didn't have a whole lot going on. That's why you only gave him one talent. So why not manage your expectations of what this employee could do? While the implication is this boss represents the divine, I recognize no such divine in the New Testament that's more concerned about profit than humanity. Slow up, boss man. Slow up, leaders of the world. Slow up, dictators. Get a hold of your temper. Check yourself. Check your ego. Check your heart. Rein your expectations in. And examine yourself just a little bit closer. As we approach the holiday season, it might be a nice time for all of us to check our expectations, cultivate gratitude and appreciation. Stress rides high during these holidays, not only from the expectations of others, but mainly those we put on ourselves. It might be nice to let go or loosen those expectations. I know it's hard because you've been riding with them for a while, but think of the break that you could possibly give yourself. Think of the grace you might offer to others if you let go of some of those expectations. I thought about this third employee a little longer this year. In his exchange, he says, I knew what kind of boss you were. He knew his boss well. He even throws a little shade when he declares that his boss reaps money where he did not sow and gathers where he did not separate the husk from the grain. He knew how his boss ran his business, and he knew how much the business meant to his boss. When he was tasked with protecting his money, he took the task seriously. He thought of how can I protect my boss's money? How can I make sure that when my boss comes back, the money will be there. He was thoughtful, and he was concerned. I got it. I'm going to go bury this money so no one will know where it is besides me. I won't spend it. I won't let someone else spend it. It will be safe. And when my boss returns, I will be able to give him back exactly what he gave me. You will have what is yours. The employee was pleased. He didn't spend the money. He didn't gamble the money. He wasn't irresponsible with the money. And while he didn't increase the amount, he didn't harm anyone. He did the best thing he could do with his skills. And yet the master was angry. Maybe it's time to manage our expectations. Today I began with a birthday fiasco. And I'll end with another birthday fiasco, hoping the lesson of managing our expectations will be grasped even better. A dear loved one of mine was in town last week. We were cutting up. We were having a ball, which is just a phrase for meaning. We were enjoying one another's company. With the exception of two years ago when my uh, dear friend came here, it had been 25 years since I had seen her. I had been a kid when I last saw her. And so having her come into town, we went back down Memories Lane. And so we went out to this nice restaurant, and at some point I asked my friend, because of her behavior, I'm beginning to wonder, what is her astrological sign? So I asked her, when is your birthday? Should, I should tell you right now that my friend is a Jehovah Witness. So I secretly say, you aren't one of those Jehovah Witnesses that don't celebrate your birthday. <laughs> and so... Not missing a beat, she responds to me, yes, I am one of those Jehovah Witnesses that do not celebrate my birthday. So because of the well-established roots of our relationship, we bantered back and forth, not losing ground. I say I want to understand Jehovah Witnesses and why they don't celebrate their birthday, because nothing in me can fathom why somebody wouldn't celebrate their birthday. And so I turned to my friend, I said, just explain to me, I'd like to understand better about what all goes into the Jehovah Witness 
not celebrating their birthday. And she says, because it's not about us. For the Jehovah Witness, we are seeking eternal life. Our birthday is not important. The day we were born is just a day, but where we spend eternity is everything. Our life is about our Heavenly Father, period. But I say, but it's the day the Lord made you. She was like, but it's not about us. So she responds, but I can tell you when I will turn 61 years old. I smile and say, I'd love to know when you would turn 61 years old. And she says, today. I'm like, today is your birthday? No, Charlene, today is the day I turned 61 years old. And I'm glad she shared. It took a minute to manage my expectations. And so I turned to her and I said, well, when we get to the restaurant, I can't tell them, no, you cannot. It took a while to manage my expectation. My sister has made a lot of mistakes in life, and I said, man, she lived her whole life without Jehovah Witness and then found Jehovah Witness about a decade ago. She's been down some back alleys, and today she leaves a clean and sober life to the glory of God. Jehovah has, Jehovah has saved her, gives meaning to her life, and guides her in a way that completes her. The least I can do is enter where she is, and manage my expectations. We go out and we have a fabulous dinner. She gets the bartender to make her a nice non-alcoholic drink and I have another kind of drink and we enjoy one another's company. Amen. <laughs>